Hey guys, it's Tiffany from supereasymath.com. Today we're going to go over some geometry vocabulary. <laughs> Parallel lines with the transversal. When you're dealing with parallel lines with the transversal, there are several different vocabulary terms that are going to be helpful for you to understand what you're working with when you're doing different things. If somebody were to refer to parallel lines themselves, they're talking about two lines that do not touch. So in this particular example, line Y and line Z would never touch. They're perfectly parallel. That means any given time along uh, an axis or maybe if these were on a coordinate plane, these two lines would never intersect each other at all, any place. They remain parallel. You could think of them sort of as like the wheels on a car. Let's say the, the wheels left these lines as their track and maybe like some snow or some mud or something. Those two tracks are never going to meet because they're always attached to the car, so they always move side by side and it's not possible for them to cross. So if somebody were to ask you to actually write the parallel lines for this particular example, you could write it as line Y and line Z. You could also write that as line Y and line Z. Whenever you're notating a line and you're using the symbol, you basically draw a line above the name of the line and you make sure to put two arrows on the end of the line that you've drawn. Now let's take a look at a transversal. In this particular example, the transversal is the line X that you see that intersects the two parallel lines. So in this case, the answer for what is a transversal in this particular scenario, it would be line X. And I could write that like this, or I could write that like line X. Now let's take a look at alternate interior angles. I want you to pay close attention to the name of this. Whenever you see interior or exterior in one of your titles of your angles, it's giving you precise information about where you're going to find these angles. So they're usually referring to an area in relationship to your parallel lines. So I would say everything that is interior in relationship to the parallel lines means everything that falls in between the two lines. If something were exterior, it would be something that is above the line or below your lower line. So because we're dealing with interior, we're only gonna be dealing with stuff that's in this area. So as far as angles go, the interior angles that I can see very quickly are C, D, E, and F. The only thing we need to do is make sure we are pulling out alternate interior angles. So what I'm going to do is make sure I get angles that are on opposite sides of the transversal line. So in this case, I have D and that would be matched with E. So an answer would be angle D and angle E. Another answer for alternate interior angles would be angle C and angle F. See, they alternate. It's kind of like if this transversal line continued down and you continued with letters, and you would say, okay, you're, you're going in a pattern. You're alternating across this transversal line. You're, you're on the left side of the line, then the right side, then the left side, then the right side. See, that's where the word alternate comes from. So when you're alternating, you could get one from the left side of the transversal and then one from the right side. So this means another answer that you could have listed here is angle C and angle F. And as you can see, I'm putting a little uh, mark that kind of looks like a, a less than symbol. This is what I'm using to represent the angle of something. So whenever I'm referring to a particular angle in math, you just write that symbol that kind of looks like a less than symbol. And then you're gonna write whichever angles uh, letter or however it's named. So all of my 
angles in this particular example are named with letters. So if it were angle C, you would just write that angle and then the letter C. Now let's take a look at alternate exterior angles. So again, just like my last example, I explained to you that the words actually explain where your angles are gonna be. So we're looking for angles that are exterior, and this is in relationship to my parallel lines. So I'm looking for things that are above the line and below the line, because that would be exterior. Now, I'm, I also know that I'm looking for angles, okay? So I'm not looking for a line, so I don't need to really mention the transversal. I just need things that are angles. And then it says alternate. So just like the last one that I explained where it's kind of like one time it's on one side of the transversal and another time it's on the opposite side, you want to keep that in mind. So for this particular example, angle B and angle G would be alternate exterior angles. So an answer could be angle B and angle G. So you may have noticed another example for an alternate exterior angle, and that would be angle A and angle H. See how they alternate in relationship to the transversal? Angle A is on the left side of the transversal, but angle H is on the right side. And then they are both exterior, meaning they are both outside of your parallel line. So here's your parallel lines and they're both outside and then they alternate. So your another answer you could have picked was angle A and angle H. All right, here's another example of where our wording in the description of the angles really helps us figure out where the angles are. I can see that we're gonna be dealing with interior angles. So that means we're gonna be dealing with angles that fall inside my set of parallel lines, okay? So that means only stuff that's in this range is what I'm gonna be considering. And we're gonna be dealing with angles, so I don't need to worry about the lines themselves. And then it's telling us that it's gonna be on the same side, and they're talking about the same side of the transversal. So of the transversal line, we're gonna be dealing with stuff that's on the same side. So I got a D and F, and those would be same side interior angles, so I could write that as an answer. Angle D and angle F. Or I could take a look on the left side of my transversal and I have angle C and angle E. So that's angle C and angle E. Now let's take a look at corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are a little bit different. Corresponding angles are angles that are sort of like in the same position but along a different one of the parallel lines. So I can say that this B is on the right side of the transversal and it's above the parallel line. And so is the F. The F is on the right side of the transversal and it's above the parallel line. So as far as corresponding angles go, I could say angle B and angle F are corresponding angles. I could also say that angle A and angle E are corresponding angles. So that's angle A and angle E. Now when you're dealing with corresponding angles, you don't necessarily have to deal with angles that are all exterior or all interior. It's like a mixture. So basically what I'm saying is I have more corresponding angles, not just those two sets. I also have D and H. So I have angle D and angle H. And last but not least, I also have angle C and angle G. Vertical angles. Vertical angles are angles that are exactly diagonally across from each other at an intersection. So angles B and C are vertical. When it comes to measurements, they're gonna be the exact same. So if angle B was a, is a measurement of let's say 105 degrees, then angle C is also 105 degrees. So a possible answer for vertical angles would be angle B and angle C. And another example could be like E and H. So angle E and angle H. 
and also A and D are vertical angles and F and G are vertical angles. So I've written those angle comparisons down as well. Now you try. Comment with the correct answer below, then head over to my website and click on video answers to see if your answer is correct. Using this pair of parallel lines cut by a transversal, list a pair of alternate exterior angles. Supereasymath.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Did you find this video helpful? You can support this channel by donating to Super Easy Math through PayPal. There's a link to it in the description section below this video and on the Super Easy Math YouTube cover photo.